And we got this 2008 Chevy, I think it's 2008. Somebody that knows uh, Chevy way better than I do. Somebody's way smarter than me. They can tell you exactly what it is. But I believe it's 2008 and it's got a problem with the, the windows. Won't go up and down. It's got some other weird stuff. Somebody told the guy he needs a, uh, what's it called? You know, you know the thing, the body control module. Is it bring it on in? Let's go ahead and look at it. The guy already has one in the, in the truck. He just bought this. So we'll, uh, let's go ahead and find out what's actually going on. So you guys know I like to kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Not the band. All right, guys. So obviously we're going to keep it simple. Let's see, is the window switch actually putting out power to the window? So come over here, turn the key on. So we got some power. Good job. You got to have a green pocket screwdriver to pop this up. If you don't have a green one, probably not going to work. So, the little boop. You got to say boop or it doesn't work. That, 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 that's a fact. All right, so we come to the wiring diagram here and this red and white one is supposed to be at pin two. That should have power all the time, all right? And when we look at the connector for that, going back, all that is, we can actually go to the connector that's for, scroll down, and it tells us, hey, yeah, you're definitely supposed to have power on number two, you're supposed to have it on number uh, four as well. Nothing there. Let's make sure we got it ground. Oh, look. Check it out. Boop. Got power. So, what's going on with this one? I thought, all right, well, let's see if I put power to that one, will the window work? Let's find out. So, took a jumper wire. Now, literally, just the other end of this is just right to positive terminal on the back. So, yeah, go ahead, shove it in here. So, now we're putting power the circuit that didn't have power but it's supposed to have power. The power let's see what we got. Oh that's a real home there. That's good stuff. So big question why isn't this getting power? Let's find out. Now we come back to our trusty wiring diagram. We see alright cool. No power here. It doesn't show pin four on here. That's alright. We know that we do have power there. So come back over here look here 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 boop boop and let's say Fuse box, instrument panel left side. All right, I think I can find that. Oh, there's a panel right here. Go ahead and pop it off. And you gotta find out, you know, which one of these wires, you know, red and white wires here, is not having power on. So the simplest thing you can do is pop off, you know, some of the crap down here and just grab the harness that's coming through the door and see where it goes. Follow it around and there it is right there. So right now, what we're checking is we want to make sure we have a complete circuit from here all the way to right here. As this is the this is the plug that as I wiggled this harness, I saw that it went right through the door. Oh, but for those that don't know. This, this is how an ohm meter works. All right, guys, so get your big bad snap-on meter out. This one here comes with Netflix. I made that up, guys. All right, so look, we just got it plugged into the standard ports right here. Sorry. All you're doing is checking to make sure that a wire is, is complete, that doesn't have like a break in the middle that you can't see. So imagine you can't see, you know, this section in between because, you know, one end comes under the the dash of the car and the other side goes on under the hood of the car so you can't see that area in between you want to make sure it's a complete circuit so you go ahead have it hooked on one side and you touch on the other side oh there you go you can tell we know it's a complete circuit if i was to cut this in half all of a sudden it wouldn't be beeping we know we don't have a complete circuit so that's a simple way to understand that's how to use an ohm meter and a normal reading is going to be something especially for a straight shot, it's going to be less than one ohm, all right? And that's exactly what we have here, 0.17. And you don't have to have one that beeps at you. you know, if we turn off the beep, if we turn off the beep, you still get a reading. And that, that's a good reading for this. All right, so with that in there, then we check just to make sure, hey, is this, oh, 
beeping. So we know we have a complete connection through there. That it's not that where the wire comes in to the pin on the other side, it's not broke inside or anything. We know because we put it on there, it shows that we have continuity beeps. All right. And if you don't have one that beeps, it's okay. You should see a reading, you know, like this. Uh, you know, under one ohm is really normal for just a straight shot of wire. All right, nice. nice. So yeah, so that's not too much resistance. Power can pass through that, no problem. And that should have power. So why doesn't it have power coming out of here? So why doesn't it? Well, wire diagram shows that there's a 25 amp circuit breaker inside this fuse block. Let's see if we have power getting to the pin that feeds this block. And it says it's hot at all times. So, get your test light. And you guys can't see it from here, but uh, the pin that that goes to is in the top, you know, top right. Put it on here and nothing. Slide this out, flip it around, and oh, there it is, 25 amp circuit breaker. Remember, hey.
All right, so the two red and black wires, one of them goes, you know, from, from the diagram. So the one that goes for the PDM, and we don't know if that's the one that lit up or not. If this was the one that lit up, that would mean there's a problem inside the fuse block. If it's not, but if this is one that not lit up, there's a problem with where it's getting power from. What's that say? 59. Let's check that. And the other red and black one is this guy here. And it goes to 67. All right, we got two options here, but we're gonna go with the diesel. It's a big, bad diesel. 59. So 59 is this guy here. And regardless of how it looks, you should always just pull them out and then check the back for continuity. And what's that? Oh, we got some breakage. Looks like fuse 67 has some breakage. Uh, let's replace it, see if we get power there, or if it blows up right away, we know we have a short to ground. All right, let's head over to my scrap pile, see if I got a uh, 60 amp, come on. Oh yeah, look at all that scrap, let's see what we got here. Oh, there we go, a little boop. All right, so I want to take this out, I squeezed it, it was like pop, and kind of pop the top on it. That's all right, let me just do this. Mm, that thing's in there. Woo, there we go. All right, let's take our donor. We'll see if it pops right away. If it does, we know we got a short somewhere. Man, they're proud of those. All right, let's go ahead and put the key to the on position and see if we have power at that pin now. PCM replacement, or do a little fault tracing, you know something works, figure it out. As Jeff Spicoli would say, I could fix it. <laughs>